All right, so here are my thoughts on the uh, Malik scott Deontay Wilder fight that uh, just concluded a couple of hours ago, as well as the Herrera-Garcia fight. Uh, let's start with Deontay Wilder uh, versus uh, Malik Scott. I've never held Malik Scott in high regard at all. Yeah, he's kind of a slick boxer or a cute boxer, but, I mean, come on. The dude's C-plus level at best, and, I mean, I expect somebody... Uh, with Deontay Wilder's size and physical strength to dominate, uh, you know, even a slick average boxer like Malik Scott. Uh, you know, and who, who the hell is Malik Scott beaten or what has he ever done? Uh, <laughs> he's not a championship contender or even a fringe contender. Maybe a, a you know, a lower end uh, gatekeeper as far as I'm concerned. But I'm not going to give Deont Deontay Wilder a lot of credit for this. Not only did Malik Scott go down with a really what looked like soft punch and granted it could have burst his eardrum or you know knocked his equilibrium out of balance uh, because he did get hit over the ear or right on the ear it looked like uh, if i recall correctly um but the shot didn't look like you know one of wilder's massive punches um and you know i i think i think wilder needs to be tested by an areola or uh Stavern or it's shit even an Adamek. Uh, and I, I don't hold Adamek in in the same regard as I held him in back in the you know the light heavyweight and cruiserweight days, um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much what I thought of Deontay Wilder. I think he's very protected. I think he they're padding his record and they're using these B minus C plus level fighters to make it look like he's doing something spectacular. And even one of the commentators tonight calling the fights said he was a special fighter. I mean, that's just complete and utter bullshit. Um, I don't know if that commentator has an agenda for the network for which they're employed by or, or what the case, or he just saw something that I didn't see. But Deontay Wilder is one of those guys, I think, the moment he steps up to B -le solid B-level competition, uh, he's getting knocked out. And I don't care. Vladimir Klitschko could be 50 years old, and he would he would he would knock Deontay Wilder out cold. Um, so that's it on him. Uh, as far as the Danny Garcia, uh, Mauricio Herrera fight, um, <laughs> what a joke, man. You know, er boxing scoring is one of the big controversies. It always has been, but it's become more prominent in recent years, especially with the advent of Facebook and Twitter and blogs and podcasts and things like that, uh, or social media in general. Um, but, the one the one judge gave the fight to Garcia, uh, I think he had it eight to four. The draw was even questionable for me. I had Gar Garcia losing by uh, three rounds, um, and I know several other people who had it. You know, had uh, Garcia losing by a much wider margin. So, you know, I'm not going to claim that the fix was in. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, and until I see evidence that you know that's clearly the case. I'm not even going to speculate on that. Um, I do think there's obviously some, there's corruption in in the sport, and there's you know hometown cooking, as they used to say, um, and I definitely think that Garcia got the hometown decision, uh, fighting out of Puerto Rico. Um, so you know Herrera deserved the win tonight. He didn't get it. Um, fortunately, I think he'll get some decent fights moving forward, which will be good for his career and his bank account. Um, Garcia, on the other hand. I think he has to resell himself, or or Showtime has to try to resell that brand. Um, I've always thought of Danny Garcia as a very solid, very good fighter, um, but not not the spectacular fighter that the press always seems to try to make him out to be. Um, he was losing to Amir Khan before he caught Khan with one good punch, and granted he won the fight. He was the better man that night. Uh, but he was getting the beat down from Amir Khan. Um, Lucas Matisse fought really well against Garcia, um, and I thought he kind of bowed out of that fight after uh, his face got busted up and he, you know, sustained an injury. I don't think uh, Matisse fought the same after that. Uh, and that's not to take credit away from Garcia. He, you know, he fought he fought a little tentatively in the Matisse fight, but I thought he looked all right. He, he fought smart. Um, you know, and in this fight tonight. Danny looked exceedingly average. I, I don't know if it's fair to say he, he was exposed as being very average. Um, but the really great fighters, you know, the Hearns, the Tysons, 
uh, even, hell, even the Klitschko's, guys like that, you know, uh, you know the Leonard's, all those guys, the Haglers, they don't go 12 rounds with a journeyman and have to get a, you know, rely on a gift decision. Uh, they either close the show because they're so much more dominant, skill and power wise, uh, than somebody like Herrera would be, um, or, or they go 12 rounds and they, you know, it's a complete dominant beatdown. Uh, but Garcia didn't do that tonight, and uh, you know, some are gonna say, oh, it's weight drain. Some are gonna say oh, overtraining. Some are gonna say what I'm saying. Maybe he's not all he's cracked up to be. And uh, I'm not making any excuses for Danny. I, you know, I'm very critical of every boxer, including my favorites. Um, and I really like Danny. He's an exciting fighter, and he's got some pop. But the Danny Garcia I saw fight tonight uh, isn't the same Garcia that I normally see fight. Now, how much of that can be attributed to Herrera taking the fight to him or a style thing? I don't know. I tend to think that when people say, well, styles make fights... It's usually said in defense of a, of a fighter who's supposed to have been dominant or heavily favored and then performs poorly. Um, the, like I said, the guys with great skill are the truly great fighters. Get those kinds of, or the Herrera type of fighters out of there or they dominate for 12 rounds and they get a stoppage. So that's pretty much all I have to say.